Um, good morning. My name is David Ferbata. I uh, work on the editorial side of Meister Media Worldwide. Uh, we have several media brands, uh, including Precision Agriculture, and it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, it's my great thanks to FIRA for inviting Meister Media to be part of this. We're very excited about the robotics segment. We've been covering precision agriculture and site-specific uh, agriculture in, for about 25 years. And this particular segment is something that we think shows great promise to be able to deliver better productivity and address a lot of the macroeconomic and socioeconomic issues that farming faces. So to my immediate left, we have uh, Cedric Bach. He's the CEO of uh, Vitabot and uh, the Bacchus robot. I'm gonna have each of the panelists introduce their technology on their own. And to his left, we have uh, Fabian Aragnon. He is uh, CEO of Citia, and he champions uh, the Pumagri robot. On conference, in just a moment, we're going to have Terry Bideau. He is the, the chief manager, chief vineyard manager of Pernod Ricard. And uh, he is doing experiments with several robots in his vines. So with that brief introduction, I'd like um, each of the panelists just to introduce themselves a little bit further, talk a little bit about your company, talk a little bit about your technology, and uh, answer the question, uh, what is a most recent success that you've had uh, at your company? Well, good morning, Cedric Bash. I'm the co-founder of Vitibot, and Vitibot is a company which is about three years old. We are a recent company. We have about 50 staff members, engineers, making research and development. And as you know, with the name, we are a company specialized in robotics for agriculture. So one of our specificities to design the machine, the platform, which is called Bacchus, which is a four-wheel drive uh, um, machine operating with a battery with the slopes of about 45 degrees due to the specificity of the land in the Champagne area. And beyond that particular platform, we're also having tool, uh, designing tooling because we couldn't find uh, the electric tooling uh, that was satisfactory uh, and hydraulic tooling as well we are designing because we couldn't find any that were sufficiently good for us. So we decided to redevelop all the tools and that we can install on the machine with an efficiency uh, uh, and uh, in smartness uh, um, uh, functions for us to communicate uh, to know if the work is done well because we have an autonomous platform. We haven't got any operator to supervise the work done by the machine. And also, uh, we have a service relay. The idea is that... Uh, in the future, we'll do some data collection and we'll supervise the machines that are operating and there's plenty of things that, which is being done and we are doing these things. We are designing the platform, the so-called back use, and we are designing the tooling as well. I think we may have some time to talk about this as well. And we also have the service aspect. So much for me. Now, Cedric, thank you. And uh, morning, Fabien Rignon. I'm 46 years old. I'm uh, heading the CTIA company. This is an industrial uh, company created in 86. And we started our activity, uh, robotics activity, about 10 years ago. And we uh, started our projects for mobile robotics with the school in 2014. And we launched the Praetor uh, uh, brand during the CTV um, uh, event, and we're very new, but we have been working for quite a long time on this particular project. So our vision uh, is that we want to have an industrial uh, machine which would be uh, available to everybody, and we're doing all our work so that these things occur. So I'd like to detail this a little bit later. Thank you both. Do we have Terry yet? So we will look forward to, to, uh, to him coming. For now, we can talk about some of the manufacturing challenges you might have. Um, we started this session talking about some of the great macroeconomic and socioeconomic factors that are generating interest in robots. Uh, we have reduced MRLs, maximum residue limits. We have 
uh, banning of chemistries throughout the EU as well as throughout other parts of the, the world. Um, we have labor. We have uh, aging farmers. This is a huge problem recruiting a new generation to take over as farm managers. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the drivers that are creating adoption as you see it and how you articulate the value of robotics to in, in vines? Alors, effectivement, le premier, le premier souci qu'ont qu les viticulteurs... Well, the first concern that we have as viticulturists is that we have to find the uh, personnel, the staff, to uh, go on the tractor to do the work. And this is a very long uh, cycle, which has been existing for quite a while. And we also have the idea that we want to protect all the uh, uh, farmers and the operators of the machines. We want to make sure that they are far from the chemi chemical products. And this is a trend which has been going on for years and uh, over the last years we have a novelty which is the uh, environmental uh, concerns that have cropped up and we have had a very strong, strong strength uh, uh, concern with environmental issues. Everybody is very much aware of that now and particularly in the agriculture uh, sector and viticulture. And so these are, this, ha this has consequences because uh, the quantity of work that has to be car carried out in the vineyards is not uh, stable because the concerns, uh, environmental concerns, lead us to go towards new practices. I think, in particularly with glyphosate, we will do uh, some mechanical weeding rather because it's much more time consuming than the chemical weeding, but we estimate it's about 10 to 15 more times needed or labor time needed uh, between the two modes of operation. Now, we also have other concerns with the quantity of of, uh, products that are going to be sprayed in the vineyards and uh, we think of solutions like uh, spraying in a confined environment which is a solution which has been developed and the idea is to have less product and to uh, uh, spray it at the right time and in, uh, in the right place and uh, we can see that potentially this is exactly a, a new source of labor and uh, additionally uh, it will have an impact or there's a will to progress uh, in the environmental issues means that we it means it's more labor intensive for us over the last years and this is a trend which has been increasing greatly over the last years which is pushing the uh, farmers uh, to find new solutions or uh, the wine growers to find new solutions and we think that robotics is a very good uh, alternative to the uh, conventional vehicles because it will enable us uh, to have uh, machines in the field that can do the work well well, because uh, we cannot find the labor for that and also we can do it by taking more time and also by having the right uh, dose of products at the right time with machines that are going to operate uh, 24 hours a day if we want to with the right dose. Now, true, uh, uh, surely we have a labor shortage uh, either in the viticulture but also in the other areas and, uh, and uh, as, uh, uh, as a complement to what Cedric has just said, robotics can also bring the accuracy and the uh, repeatability of a number of uh, work and uh, work is going to increase but we're going to have less chemical products so we'll have more labor work and there are new practices to be implemented uh, with new tools and the idea is not to revolutionize everything but to use the tools that exist uh, and then to combine them as well and to adapt them uh, to add uh, some sensors as well maybe so the idea is to try and use all the existing tools and to bring the capability and the so that we can do all the work and so that everything can be done and the quantity of work should have has to be this has to be done uh, the farmers are ready but they need the robust tools and adapted to their needs There is uh, a lot of bad stories about agriculture out there with um, the, the using of chemistries, the uh, soil contamination, the leaching of fertilizers into groundwater. Um, it's difficult sometimes to tell a good story about how technology is fixing some of the um, solution, or creating better solutions to some of the problems we've created with traditional agriculture systems. How much of that is part of your story? 
um, and how do you articulate that through the value chain? Effectivement, c'est un peu ce qu'on entend avec ça a même pris un mot. Well, this is what we've heard, and this is what we call agri bashing in French, actually. In, in, so this is quite new, actually, because it's only for the for the last years that it, we have heard this notion of agri bashing, and it becomes predominant. And it concerns all the uh, wine growers or viticulturists. And the uh, concern I have is that when I was young, I was in a very small uh, village in Champagne, and we have vineyards that are extremely uh, uh, um, uh, that are in um, ragged areas, and we had to use uh, helicopters to spray uh, things. And it was uh, uh, due to the slope, and this was prohibited uh, over the last three years at the European level because the helicopter. Helicopters. helicopters are spraying from a, a distance in the altitude and there's the the blade uh, and the wind uh, if, if, and there's a dispersion and scattering of all the products onto the villages so that was a safety issue for the public and it was prohibited at the European level so the concern we have here is that we haven't got machines going onto these particular plots of lands that are very steep so we have to go with a very small tractor or very, uh, and with an operator who's just behind that machine, we haven't got the room to put any cabins or booths on that particular vehicle because it's too small. These are very small plots and uh, steep uh, land or areas, and it's about one meter high, uh, wide, and it's very difficult to guide the machine as well. So we have an operator who's combined, who's got a, his own suit and uh, uh, walking with his machine uh, when in the machine is spraying the product. So this is a very concerning um, uh, situation, and we have no other solutions at the moment to work on these particular uh, pieces of land. And this is why we had uh, very recently the authorization to make experiments with drones that would be uh, spraying onto these vineyards that are on very slow, steep slope um, um, plots. And um, this is definitely a public safety issue. And we have to manage to reconcile both the uh, safety issue, as I'm telling you, with for the um, farmers, but also for the uh, villagers around. And we also should uh, cons reconcile the environmental issues or reduce the quantity of products chemical products, and we are not very good with a drone because the, the drone is going to spray uh, on, over a very large area. This is not very satisfactory, but at the same time, we have to reconcile issues that are economic uh, for the uh, farmers or for the uh, for these uh, particular farmers. Uh, so this is an issue, and I think we can do that uh, by with the robot, robots, with smaller machines that will be able to go on more difficult uh, terrain because we have, won't have any operators we won't take any risk because there won't be an operator being endangered in that particular situation. So these are the evolutions the way I see them. And this is why we've been working on the Bacchus uh, pro, um, uh, for a mechanical weeding. And now we're working on a spraying uh, solution, which would be collecting as well. So I uh, will do confined environment spraying because the idea in our company is to have the various viticultural uh, viticulture practices progress we want to go to the best. We want to reduce doses as much as we can. Well, as a manufacturer of agricultural uh, robots, we don't want to choose uh, the tools or the methods, but we want to propose the uh, a, a variety of choices. And this is what we are doing with Tractor, with this particular um, variable motor platform. We want to add the to existing uh, existing tools. We want to combine the uh, the, the tools. And, we, and all the solutions haven't been invented yet. And agriculture has been evolving for thousands of years. And it would be pretentious um, to tell the farmers to do what they want. But uh, we want, they want to test their best solutions uh, in accordance with their land or plots of lands, and I think this is a good solution, uh, be it um, plant protection uh, systems or mechanical systems or hydraulic systems or electric systems. We have to leave the choice to the uh, ag uh, to the farmer, and still we want to bring uh, them this platform which is adapting to the variety of possibilities and also prepare the platforms of the future with sensors that will be needed to work uh, in the near future. 
effectivement, juste pour ajouter un mot sur ce Again, point-là. Yeah, I just would like to add something concerning this particular aspect because that, uh, we have a slightly different uh, vision uh, at VT but we want the customer to mount all their existing tools. That's a good thing, but it's not necessarily the, the avenue we have chosen. We know that it's going to bring frustration and we want to resolve this issue, but we do not want the customers to mount any type of tool on the machine. Why? Because uh, uh, on a traditional machine you have an operator which is seated on the machine that, that can supervise the operation of all and every tools. Uh, I can, uh, for the soil, for example, we are going to weed uh, the major vineyards and there's an operator in charge of uh, supervising the tools to make sure they work well. There is no jam in the machine, there's no anomalies, and still uh, make sure that it works well. And you can have mechanical or electrical or hydraulic tools available. That's not a problem. But then on an autonomous uh, machine, if we mount a mechanical or hydraulic uh, tool on which we have no feedback, we won't know whether the machine is going to do it well or not. It will dr the machine will drag the tool, and maybe the tool will be will be blocked and will be uh, tearing up uh, some uh, products or some vineyards. So this is a major issue, and this is why we have redeveloped and redesigned electric and uh, smart tools. The idea is not to necessarily sell these with our machines, but it, because it represents a very small part of our turnover, I'm talking about the, the, the tools here, but we want to provide a, a complete package to the customer. There will always be the possibility of uh, having some additional weeding uh, tools, but for the major motorized tool, uh, we think that they should be communicating to tell the machine whether everything is working well or not. So we'd like to add something else as well. Well, the tools exist, but we can still communicate with them, can't we? Uh, and there are solutions that are being implemented for that particular purpose. It's nice to have choice as a consumer, and it's nice to have different products that we can um, decide what might fit our operation best. So uh, a little bit of divergence in some of these product offerings. I'd like to welcome um, our, our third panelist, uh, Terry Bedell, I think is with us. Can we see Terry? Uh, bonjour à tous. Um, ravi uh, avec vous. Good morning. I'm very pleased. I'm pleased to be with you this morning to talk about the subject we like very much. Thank you for joining us. We're sorry uh, uh, we had um, some issues getting here uh, with the Yellow Vest protests. So this is um, a nice addition to that Terry is able to join us. Terry, can you give us just a little bit of background on um, the type of operation you manage, how many hectares, how many employees, uh, what does your operation look like, and what is your experience thus far with using robots on the vines? Okay, oui, bien sûr. Uh, donc, uh, oui, oui, bien. Well, uh, of course, I'd like to present myself. I'm in charge of the uh, vineyards, uh, uh, vineyards located in the Champagne area, and our company uh, as is uh, 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 in charge of uh, operating at two houses of uh, uh, Champagne, and we belong as well to a group uh, which is worldwide, uh, which is Pernod Ricard, and uh, as such, uh, we are producing and elaborating and distributing as well um, products uh, uh, like wine or spirits. Uh, or, or brandy. So our uh, particular farm, uh, if I were to talk about my own uh, uh, farm, we have 260 hectares of, uh, in operation, and um, we have 80, 81 uh, uh, growers, uh, uh, and also we have um, harvests, harvesting, which is manual, uh, it's, uh, you cannot do any mechanized uh, harvesting, so we have to recruit 800 uh, hands for these uh, particular uh, activities. And now to uh, address your issue, uh, why uh, do we, uh, should we uh, work with Vitibot, and why is this a concern for us? Well, we, at the moment, uh, we have a vineyard which is extremely concerned with the change in uh, practices in the Champagne region because we have uh, been uh, adopting an approach 
uh, to improve our practices. And this has led to a certification which is sustainable champagne viticulture. This is a certification which goes beyond the HVE um, brand, uh, which motivates us all because we want to do continuous improvement. And one of the uh, concerns for us in particular uh, is an objective, is the objective of reducing the inputs and more particularly uh, the pesticides. And we want to work, or we want to come back to working on the soil over the whole uh, uh, over the whole farm. Now, this type of change is not so easy to conduct because to come back to these uh, uh, practices, it requires adaptation on our part. And of course, there's a lot of, uh, it's a difficult, arduous uh, task to conduct. We have uh, uh, for, for our personnel, and so the, uh, for, for, the, for, for, the for, for the team, it's not so easy. And when you are working on these on these plots, it, uh, it's uh, quite arduous uh, for our uh, uh, co collaborators. And also, we have a, a hill. Uh, we are working on hillsides uh, with uh, steep slopes, and so mechanization is not very easy for the operators in that particular context. So necessarily. When the Vitibot uh, contacted us with robotics, just like many other uh, uh, manufacturers, and we met uh, many other manufacturers of uh, this type of equipment, and uh, we rapidly came to the uh, idea that it would be an opportunity for tomorrow and for our agriculture tomorrow, and we wanted to study um, so this. So this is the general philosophy. And why we are we have um, decided to work with Vitibot? Okay, thank you. You, uh, Terry, just to follow up there, you talked a little bit about the loss of chemistries, uh, specifically glyphosate, that's forcing more mechanical weeding. Are there other factors, uh, challenges that you need robots to solve? What are some of the things when you're looking at a partner that you like to hear about their operation? I'm not quite sure I understood the question, but the collaboration was mainly concerned with the working on the soil, because we know that the development of this type of tool, uh, there will be other opportunities in the future, but um, the advantage of this type of equipment is that uh, we are getting rid, as Cedric said, actually, uh, talking about an operator who's not on the machine anymore, for us this is a very good benefit, a, very, a great benefit, because uh, the operator on the machine can suddenly better visualize what is what goes on, but it generates a risk. And uh, if we have machines that are autonomous today, with an operator close by, could also be an opportunity to have a new type of development. Uh, and uh, skills as well, because we are developing new skills. And as a result, it quite, it's quite interesting um, for uh, our vision of viticulture to have this type of equipment. But you have to know that this equipment will not replace our tractor, because we have a fleet of tractors, which is fairly important. We have about 20 machines operating on our vineyards. We're not going to replace everything. But of course, this is an, a support. It's a new equipment that will complement a fleet, and which in the future, well, this is what we wish. Anyway, we will be able to de develop this. So now for our manufacturers, you, uh, you heard a little bit about what Terry is looking for in his operation. Um, right now, your machines are basically mechanical weeders. Um, and, but they're in the R&D process, you're looking at increased functionality. So my question is, what are the next functions that you hope to roll out? Uh, how do you gauge what to prioritize in that functionality with so many options? And um, how do you vet the opinions of some of your end users like Terry to help drive that process, that R&D process? Of course, we are doing a lot of work with the machines today 
And uh, we have to remember that uh, in the vineyards, uh, the work that we are robotizing has already been mechanized, particularly weeding is already done with a tractor. So there, there you have two types of work, what we call the manual and mechanical work, and robotics is not concerned with the manual, manual work, which requires some know-how, and which the uh, machines haven't got so far, and which will not get in the future, actually from what we can understand. And so the idea for the machines would be to do the work that the machines are doing at the moment, or all the work which has already been mechanized. We talked about the soil. Uh, uh, this is a very good point of entry. This is not necessarily the easiest, unlike what you would think, because we may have some soils that are hard, or you can have some rocks and stones, and you come very close to the uh, vineyards. And so it's not necessarily the most sim simple work. But this is one of the priorities because the prohibition of glyphosate means that we have to find other solutions. And this is a very important point because uh, unlike major uh, houses in Champagne, viticulture uh, farmers haven't decided to uh, haven't decided to go on, me on mechanical weeding yet. Now for the future, we hope that we will have a platform uh, uh, which will be proposed to the customer, which is uh, um, uh, in, encompassing uh, multiple tasks uh, for, the, for, the, for the vineyards, like the soil work, and then there will be some spraying, which is confined. We are already conducting the tests uh, for, the, uh, for the next uh, campaign, for the end of this one, actually. And the objective is to have a product which would be marketed within a year. So this is uh, what we intend to do. And then afterwards, we will extend the range with operations uh, uh, for the leaves uh, and for uh, these are other types of operations that are needed on the uh, vineyards. And so the wor uh, work on the soil and then spraying represents two thirds of the work for the vineyards. And uh, so for us, this is the main priority and this is where we have the greatest impact because we are. Uh, if we are doing other tasks, it may not be so efficient as what we are doing today. With the, uh, with the confined spraying, the idea is to try and to have, um, uh, to do things better than with traditional spraying and to uh, propose this uh, more easily with robotics, uh, with uh, machines that are going to take uh, these uh, uh, operations, uh, which will be less time consuming, and uh, uh, we are not going to replace the operators, as you have understood, because uh, as, you, as you know, work is increasing, so we are trying to find some more operators. But still, with the uh, adv advent of robotics, there's still a labor shortage. But the idea is that tomorrow the operator would be uh, close by the machine and be able to su uh, support some menial work and do all the operations requiring uh, intelligence and dexterity and uh, and um, good uh, good before before you hand off just a quick follow-up uh, for you so if I understood you correctly uh, 2020 you're expecting to introduce a closed spray system and ce sera même 2021 yes okay 2021 and this will involve um, green on green Detection systems for spot spray technology. Okay. Euh, L'idée, effectivement, c'est on va faire de la pulvérisation confinée récupératrice, mais euh, on veut aller un petit peu plus loin. On a euh, sur la machine Bacchus, on a huit caméras placées tout autour, qui sont des caméras euh, infrarouges à temps de vol, donc qui nous renvoient euh, des images en 3D. Uh, that will be spread. And this requires a very strong integration between the machine and its tooling. And then afterwards, you can imagine that you will develop other solutions, so like open source solutions that are common between the various manufacturers, as this is done with the ISO bus system enabling a universal communication between the tractor and its tooling uh, for major crops. And But there, 
These are um, spraying uh, or, uh, very much targeted spraying systems. I don't know whether the systems are ready for that yet, but by integrating everything, we think that will be a major step forward to have more uh, precision, more accuracy, and it simplifies things at the start for us as well. I think today the viticulteurs and agriculteurs need to I think that today uh, wine growers need to be reassured because they want to operate in an environment that is very well known for them. And this is what we want to bring with the using of uh, uh, tools that are available today. They want their work to be done in a flawless manner. This is why a hybrid solution is very adaptable because you can work for a long time without loading the machine too much. They also want to add functions, smart functions, later on. But to start with, to do the f main work to start with, then you need a very robust machine. Then all this exists only if there is the right network distribution that is uh, very strong and uh, very efficient. And it has been our work for the past year. We have been working with our uh, distributors to train them in the field to help them and to assist them on the field. We are really going through a change of method and model. We cannot do everything, that's for sure. We need to work within an environment, ecosystem, whether it is the tool manufacturer, the agents, the users, final users. And so it's only together that we can work. So we, you can't change everything from one day to the next. You need to go step by step, but really with very strong, re reliable tools. Terry, I, I'd ask if do those comments resonate with you, and do you feel that um, that pace of R&D and new product introduction align with your priorities in the fields? Um, excuse me, I don't understand very well your question. Do, do the, uh, the priorities of the manufacturers align with your priorities and your needs? Yes, absolutely. It is uh, in line with our priorities. As I said earlier, uh, the uh, sustainable wine growing approach that we started in Champagne region, but the whole strategy for the development of the vineyards for the group, because we're talking about Champagne, but the other companies, uh, one growing for Pernod Ricard, are very, uh, are really waiting for these developments. And uh, Cédric Opéré, everything he said, it's really in phase and in line with our expectations. It is our expectations, but it is also the indirect expectation of the consumer to have a, a vineyard that is really respectful of the environment and uh, uh, that applies new practices. And those tools that are being developed and that will be developed in the future will allow us to have a real uh, wine business, wine growing business, uh, that will be more precise. As we said earlier, our vineyard is set it's, uh, it's really submitted to different uh, climate changes that are still very strong, and we are also witnessing uh, climate changes, and it is a very quick one. So we need to have tools that will allow us to adapt ourselves very quickly. We are focusing today on the uh, soil weeding and uh, soil protection and protection of the vineyards, but really our, our expectations uh, are going to be met by these tools. And as a champagne uh, house, we also uh, uh, like a flagship of these methods because uh, the whole profession can follow us. And I think it's really the sustainability of our names that are being challenged. So the objectives uh, and development of those tools are really in phase with our expectations once again. Terry, can you talk a little bit about uh, more about how technology and these robots specifically help you tell that story about sustainability to the consumer? Is it part of your uh, your talking points when you help 
um, people understand your traceability, sustainable sourcing, and the things that consumers are asking of you? Oui, bien sûr. Yes, uh, of course, at consumer. Nowadays, it's everyone. It's you and me and the whole of uh, the, the population. And uh, consumers are more and more aware and more and more uh, informed with uh, social networks and media that are giving a lot of information. Sometimes it's wrong, by the way. But it is our responsibility to well um, uh, communicate our practices in a good manner. And the consumer wants more information on the product is going, or she's going to uh, assume. So our main objective is really to be totally transparent. We have nothing to hide about our practices. It has never been the case. And uh, robotics allow us to answer those needs and those expectations. Because as I said earlier, the world is changing and our wine growing practices are changing too. We need to be more precise in the use of our tools to have a very quality-based tool because uh, our product needs to be uh, of very high quality. And we cannot forget this. We are uh, really on the luxury product. It is a product that uh, has a name, uh, and uh, it is very important. And our challenge is really to answer those expectations through new practices, new tools, new uh, partnerships with Techni technicals and the techni technology professionals. We talk about different tools, drones, etc. All this can help us. Some things are not usable at all. I don't think everything is okay, but we need to filter. And also, consumer has to find uh, and to understand that we are very sensitive to those changes and that we're evolving with new technologies to have uh, even higher quality and to really answer uh, consumers' expectations. Thank you. So we've talked a little bit about the technology. We've talked a little bit about the drivers that are fueling adoption. Um, now I'd like to talk about the value chain a little bit and business models behind introducing this to the marketplace. Um, perhaps you could each of the manufacturers here talk about what your business model is. Uh, for example, are you using the traditional uh, mechanization distribution system, uh, the crop protection or crop input system, or a direct consumer type of model? Um, or perhaps one that hasn't been invented yet, a service provider model that's, that we've yet to, to see. How do you see this uh, populating that value chain and reaching the end user? Alors pour nous, on a l'avantage dans le monde de viticole. We are very uh, in the uh, wine growing world. We are very concentrated. We we'll have little vineyards here and there, but. We are really at European level. Uh, we are very concentrated in certain areas. And for us, uh, it helps us because for a distribution strategy, we do it directly. So we distribute directly in Champagne, in Burgundy, and next year in the Bordeaux area. For the Bordeaux, Champagne and Bourgogne, we deal with it directly. And then we uh, deal with it uh, from our headquarters in Reims, and then for Bordeaux, we're going to open a network there with a commercial person, salesperson, and technical person. We we'll want to have always somebody there, uh, regionally based there, so we want to supervise things. We want to be very close to this because we're convinced that it is the success of those first new tools that will uh, really give us a name and help us develop. It doesn't mean that we closed and that it is the only model because uh, we can uh, do other business model. And we think that um, distributors today aren't really ready because they do th thermic and hydraulic toolings. But it was the same for um, the uh, um, car industry. Uh, uh, it was only uh, th thermal. And nowadays, you have lots of um, electrical cars. 
So you can see that the designs are evolving and you have the right personnel to uh, uh, work on the uh, electrical cars. It is a progressive and natural development. We're going to do the same, I'm sure, in, the, in our world uh, for electrification or for robotics. That's sure for material, but that's also right for the platform and uh, tooling and also for services, for service providing. And we think that service providing part is going to amount for 50% in our turnover within the next 10 years because we're going to look for uh, really uh, wine growing, uh, precision wine growing. And uh, we uh, were doing 150 liters hectares, and we do that for each plot, as you would do for agricultural usage. And then now you, need, you use more fertilizers, more product, and then we go further with autonomous machines that will have GPS, very high precision GPS systems. Uh, we're going to do some zoning, but listen, plot per plot. How much fertilizer did it get each year? You can analyze with a camera the quantity of grape it's going to produce. We don't do harvesting, but one can imagine that you can have sensors, whether it's our own sensors or uh, onboard sensors that will be uh, uh, put on the communication bus, plugged, and then it will analyze harvest and it will allow the agent to anticipate on the harvest a level of maturity, what plot do you need to harvest first, and on very prestigious uh, vineyards, you can do your uh, selective um, uh, harvest. That is to say, they only harvest part of the plot, and then next week, the following week, the other part of the plot. So we are getting uh, finer and finer in our precision. And we're going to work on a scale that is going to be real on the plot so that we can monitor this. When was it planted? What fertilizer, phytosanitary products did it receive? What quantity did it produce? And with a history year on year for uh, each plant. And then we can go really much further. Just a, just a quick follow-up. Uh, the This is a full decision support system that you're describing. Is this something you're developing internally, or is this something you would use partners um, to help develop the software? Alors pour certaines parties, on va faire des développements en interne. Uh, we have si some internal le... development. It's, we're just starting, just the outset, for everything that is sensors to go and find data in the uh, vine. Uh, uh, we don't need to reinvent anything there. Those sensors do exist. You just need to find the right people to work with. As I said, we need to have machines where we can plug third products, third uh, tools, so they'll be flexible enough. So we're really open, and we're developing things to decide also. Also, for everything that is uh, to explode, exploit data and to give data to customers, you need to be uh, inter, uh, yes, inter operational systems. So machines, traditional machines, will be able to communicate with robots and uh, to feed data with the personnel too. You have uh, after treatment, there's a deadline. Uh, staff cannot get after the treatment into the uh, uh, vines. So all, the, all this has to be coordinating, coordinated. Sorry, There's a deadline of 24 to 48 hours. So we need to use this API to really feed the data for all the people involved in the chain. Thank you, Cédric. Expectations are very, very strong, and they are uh, really worldwide. Uh, users are ready. So why do we need to implement it on a large scale? I think that we need to be uh, really working with the uh, uh, existing environment to work quickly. We're going to use existing tools so that we don't change everything at once. We're going to uh, really have a uh, network distribution uh, that is that knows uh, the applications at local level. We have this network at French level. 
And our work today is really to train them so that we're ready to deploy all these solutions. The objective here is to be quick. There's lots of work ahead. We cannot do everything at once. You need to be able to plug yourselves with the others. That's the reason why with Tractor we have a very polyvalent machine that with hybrid solutions, which is very autonomous and very strong, as I said earlier. And when you what you have in mechanics, you have it also as a software platform to uh, not to invent uh, tomorrow's sensors, but to really digest tomorrow's sensors. So we are really open open on this world that is evolving. But we need to accompany uh, everything step by step in very simple and concrete ways on the field. That's the only way to make it popular and to make it accepted on a large scale. And we're, of course, very open to, to discussions. We are not going to produce all the machines that are going to be needed, so we'll have partnerships with uh, production or productions in a higher level. But we are implementing everything so that everything will happen in the industrial um, manner. But we're really at the outset of this uh, story for uh, uh, farming robotics. So. Lots of things to be done, but the objective is really to uh, be really at uh, the crossroad of uh, new possibilities thanks to this platform, but to work with the existing. This is what we're proposing today. So looking at the existing distribution systems, there are multiple tiers, sometimes from mechanization, the manufacturer dealers, uh, the big iron guys that sell tractors, and then the product input supply chain. They're, they're different. When you say you're looking at all options, does, does anyone make more sense for this kind of technology? It's, um, it's an interesting dynamic that we have crop production companies starting to write their contracts differently than selling services. They're selling results. So I'm curious as to how you look at that dynamic and that emerging business model as it fits into robots. Well, I cannot say really the right model is going to be this one. I cannot say that. We're just here to uh, produce a robot that will adapt to the practices on the field. Business models are all evolving, that's for sure. Whether it has to be with agents, practices, uh, farming companies, whatever. Is it going to be services? Is it going to be combined? Uh, things I don't know. We just give the ability to choose with our platform. And then do we want to uh, exploit the data? Do we want to just work? Do we want to do both? Future will tell. But we need to give this ability. And then CTA and VTBOT and IO. All of us, we're not enough for all the uh, uh, demands at a uh, world level. We're working the right direction. We are different in our approaches just as well. We are matching more and more expectations. So then business models will evolve because we will have the abilities that will be concrete on the field. You cannot just have your models evolving just by uh, in a theoretic way. It's um, because of the uh, needs on the field, that uh, services, uh, possibilities, tools, applications, data will evolve. That's why you need to be uh, really open so that we can work and help developing these systems. The doors are opening. We uh, cannot do everything, but we're open to all discussions, of course, whether it's in France or at a um, world level. We have lots of partnerships at an uh, international level. I often say that we have uh, uh, technical people and uh, people uh, studying PhD, but we have the head in the uh, stars, but really, we're really down to earth. And I think that's really important. We need to give technology in a natural way, in a way, you um, know, everyday basis, on an everyday basis, natural, um, it's our objective. Uh, before, before you contribute, uh, I'd like to say we just got about 10 minutes left in this conversation. If you have any questions, I want to make sure I make time for all of your questions to be answered. So. Just a show of hands, does anyone have any questions for our manufacturer guests or for Terry on the phone? 
And then seeing none as of yet, I'll let you formulate them in the next few minutes. I'll let uh, Cedric respond a little bit and add to that value chain at, uh, question. Yes, I will be very brief. There's one example. Small uh, wine growers in Champagne uh, have lots of uh, plottings, lots of uh, very small plots. And uh, with legacies, uh, you have uh, some uh, landowners who have very, very small uh, areas to work on. And it's uh, a real concern because investing into a machine, whether it's a robotic machine or a traditional machine, it's an investment that is really very, very strong, very, very important, that is not justified for the the uh, size of the plot. And with robotics, you have also the uh, development of uh, uh, things. In Champagne, it is developing. But we think that robotics can uh, really, it could be a good, uh, uh, an important thing for the Kuma, because Kuma are being developed a lot. And uh, we are in a, on an autonomous machine. You can lend it to anyone. Machine will do its job anyway. So that will uh, really um, uh, allow for um, sharing of the uh, tools and of the machines. You have a plot here, the other one uh, a kilometer away. It's very difficult to work because you need, you need lots of transportation. And here what, uh, what one can see, and it has been coordinated with the Champagne Committee in Champagne. It's the idea is to work together in a local way to share resources so that there is one machine, a robotic one, but it could go further and to work on the, on the hillsides of slopes that with machines that will work on that particular slope. So logistically, it is very viable material also for uh, wine growers. They have very small plots, so it's difficult for them to have their own material. But also, there is a challenge for safety because we're talking about uh, deadlines for uh, staff to go back after having treated uh, a, a plot. You cannot go uh, inside for a person after 48 hours, but it can be just 10 uh, acres, and then you can work on this uh, plot and uh, your neighbor can do his or her treatment at the same uh, time. So the main uh, advantage would be to uh, share resources. So you would treat the whole uh, uh, slope, then you let it, then the operators come and do the hand picking after this uh, time has been respected. So you could improve also safety for the, uh, for the staff. So c clearly there's a learning curve and an expertise that comes with the manufacturers in helping the end user maximize the use of these robots. Um, I, I wonder, Terry, if now that you're experimenting with these robots and you're starting to implement them in a pragmatic way, what are some of the support features you expect from a manufacturer? How do you maximize their expertise and uh, uh, and then I'll follow up with the manufacturers talking about their basic support programs. Sure. The question was for me. Um, if I understood you correctly, David. How can we optimize the type of, uh, of material? Is that what you said? Yes. My, my question was, what support do you need from the manufacturer to help okay. implement the technology? OK. Oui. Alors, uh, il est évident que ce yes. Type this type of material, uh, it's new technology, OK? We don't know it yet. And none of us can control it. It's going to be a partnership work. We need to learn. There's a big learning curve, as you said. And you cannot do it if a Vitibot company doesn't support us. And I think we are very reassured here, because upstream, there's lots of work for a look at the plot, 
uh, the plots, sorry, that is really needed to uh, have the good operation of VTBOT. And I'm going to, uh, from Cedric uh, teams, I want to have uh, to be helped uh, for the right operation of these machines and then to be helped at operational level. Uh, on an everyday basis, uh, one can say that uh, there are lots of things that we hadn't anticipated, so you work with nature. But uh, maybe it's going to uh, disturb minor things, the operation um, of uh, work. Maybe a hole in the ground, for a rabbit, uh, a piece of wood uh, on the way. All this is real life. So we need to have their support from the manufacturer so that only part of this would be analyzed without our operators to be directly uh, impacted uh, directly on the field because the main point of the robot is uh, for the operator not to be on the machine anymore. So one can imagine that many hurdles that are being detected by the robots can be solved by the operator through camera systems, uh, things like that. And tomorrow, what we expect from uh, VTBOS or all the other operators, one can see that today many operators that are in the room are really there and are really um, into this problematic and their interests show the evolution and uh, richness of diversity will answer a richness of demands from customers who have as many offers as uh, demands. So this relationship that we can have with the uh, manufacturer is also to give our experience, our feedback, so that this type of machines will be always evolving. You have what has been created uh, with the criteria uh, that are very rigorous to start with, but not everything uh, could be integrated. And uh, we're going to bring all the points, all, uh, we're going to feed back to the operator, to the manufacturer, sorry, so, sorry, so that the machines will evolve and answer our future needs and our future demands. The end user doesn't know what they do not know. So they are relying on you for product support. We just have about, about one minute each. Can you talk a little bit about how you support the products upon delivery? What kind, of, what kind of support can they rely on? Agronomic, mechanical, all of the things that go into it. Yes, absolutely. It's a big, big change for our class customers and for operators. What we're proposing with the machine is a training that is compulsory, by the way, for the staff that is going to use the vehicles. We're also talking about tooling that they uh, used to use for example, in border area, they use a lot of uh, certain, certain machine to get rid of uh, uh, little stones. And uh, so it's new tools, see how we can integrate them with our machines. And then there is a follow-up on an everyday basis with a supervising system of the machine to see whether there is a um, dysfunctioning, uh, so that we know it very quickly. Dysfunctioning, it's not necessarily a failure. It's just uh, sometimes the machine has seen uh, a, a pothole and then has decided to put uh, itself in safety um, position. So you can activate cameras and uh, really unleash the uh, vehicles, um, activating all cameras and making sure that vehicles is really operating in safety way. And it's good. we're going to have neurons, machine learning system to improve safety and reliability sorry, of machines so that it doesn't stop. It's always a debate between safety. You need to stop anyhow if there's a hurdle, but uh, you need to stop as, uh, as, uh, as less time as possible. As I said earlier, we are an industrial small company um, at CTIA. We used to doing machines for the uh, uh, aeronautics and for the car industry. So it's always the same. You want services that is really close by. So you need to ha adapt the uh, distribution network uh, according to the needs of different countries and regions. And you need to give training. 
Uh, we are used to manage uh, after-sales services uh, through ticketing platforms. We've been doing that for years, but all this is being built thanks to the uh, network on the field because we're not going to uh, sell in machines if we don't have the right uh, level of assistance at a local level. That is the reason why we are really working on this networking. It's very time-consuming, but then we're going to deploy in a very, very quick way. That's our objective. Thank you. Is that, uh, res or that support that you offer, is it ongoing, or does it expire in a year? Is there a contract, or are you really a partner for the lifetime of the machine? Euh, nous sommes forcément un partenaire sur. Enfin, tout évolue. Nous, on a commencé il y a cinq ans. On, on a lancé la marque il y a uniquement. Que we have semaines. launched uh, uh, this two weeks ago. Next, we're not going to stop next week. It's a marathon. It's not a hundred uh, meters. Um, uh, really run. So you need to do step by step. That means you have to be to help the ecosystems with the professionals who can really add value uh, thanks to their expertise, their techniques. So, so we work on machines that are oh, been operating for years. So we are really following up uh, the development of these machines, but we are open to different uh, partnerships that we could uh, implement to uh, have access to the market uh, and for more people to have access to these uh, machines. We are deploying uh, more slowly. That's why we are concentrating only on two areas where we're de delivering machines, border area and Champagne, Burgundy. Uh, area, so we are not really. Uh, we're just uh, targeting those uh, uh, geographic areas. We do it to make sure we have the right technical people on the field and make sure it is a success story, and that we help them. Uh, that uh, we help them uh, to uh, operate the machine with the car, uh, mapping and all the training and helping on an everyday basis. So our limits are there, our regional level, so that we are sure that we give the right quality of support. That's all the time we have. I know uh, Fabian and Cedric will be here. If you have any questions, you can ask them directly. Thank you to Terry on the phone. Please give a round of applause to our panel.